Hey everybody, I'm John Keefe at Quartz. I am not Emily Withrow. Emily uh, got ill yesterday and uh, had to not come to the session today, so I'm standing in for her. I uh, hope to give you a little bit of an uh, introduction to what we're doing here with bots. Um, and I will say all of this is a little bit odd because normally I would do this presentation standing in front of you. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And um, also I can't hear anything from the auditorium. So I'm just going to cruise along and assume everything is going okay. And uh, the host can um, message me if I need to slow down or speak up or do anything like that. Um, so my name is John Keefe. I work in the Quartz Bot Studio at Quartz. Quartz is a business news website at qz.com. And um, we cover lots of different things about the global economy. Um, I came to Quartz from a public radio station in New York City. Um, I am not a business reporter. I'm not a business person. One of the reasons I came to Quartz, though, is because they are incredibly innovative with technology, especially the stuff that you end up with in your hands, in your phone, um, and maybe uh, on your kitchen counter, which we'll talk about, um, some of the voice response things. So there's a lot of experimentation that's going on here at Quartz, and um, I found it to be super exciting. Um, and what I was a part of, and Emily, who isn't here, um, we uh, started the Quartz Bot Studio. And what we're doing is trying to figure out um, what it means to talk to your devices and then what does news mean for that? How does news live in the world where you can talk to your devices? And by talking to your devices, I really mean um, either typing to your devices, like texting them, or uh, actually speaking to them. So I'm going to do a couple things here. I'm going to share my screen first. Let's see if I can do the whole thing here, yes. And then I'm also going to um, play my little slides. Okay, so here we go. Um, so this is me, if you wanna follow me or uh, message me later, happy to chat. Um, and the first thing I'd love for you to do is to text the word hi to this phone number. Uh, you can read it as 646-699-3322 or 646-699-3322. Go ahead and just text the word hi. Um, and this will give you a simple sense of what uh, we're talking about. Um, I'm hoping you have reception in the room there. It, uh, I hope it works for you. Um, so I'm just going to give you a second to go ahead and try that and you'll get a sense for a very simple bot. This is actually one of the first bots. It may be the first bot I ever built. Um, and it's super duper simple. Um, I can't hear whether or not it's working or not. So I'm just gonna go ahead and show on the screen what I hope was happening. Um, so it says, hi, what's your name? You put in your name, asks you if you like dogs ask you if you like cats. And it says, meow, cats are great pets. Um, okay, so, oh, I think I can hear all of a sudden. Oh, maybe I, I can hear something. Anyway, I'm gonna keep going. Um, so what I like about this bot is a couple of things. One, um, it adjusts to your answers, so, um, depending on how you answered those questions about cats and dogs, um, it will give you a different response at, in the end. So it's a, it's a program that's, you know, wondering what you say and then responding accordingly. And you could have gotten four different answers depending on if you said yes, yes, no, no, yes, no, or no, yes. Pretty simple. Um, also, it keeps track of every conversation separately. So there's a bunch of you in the room there it's one little program running on one little server, uh, but it knows uh, who you are and which person to talk back to. Um, if you've seen the movie Her, that's one of the things that you learn about her. Uh, uh, she's talking to a lot of different people simultaneously. This bot is doing the same thing. Um, and finally, it feels personal, even though you know it isn't. Um, 
that this is something about these bots, especially if you're chatting with them in this format, um, texting, which you're used to texting with with people, right? So it's, it's a little bit uh, a comfortable format and it's talking to you as if it's a human. It's been written to sound like a human. Um, I actually equate this a little, little bit to my previous life in public radio. Um, you know, if you're standing in a kitchen or in a car and you're listening to public radio, especially familiar voices to you, um, you'll, you, you sort of feel like, oh, they're talking to you in a way. It can be, especially if you're listening to a great podcast, somebody you really like, it feels like they're talking to you, even though you know they're not, right? You know that it's a, it's a national broadcast or podcast. Okay, so this is something that is pretty interesting. Um, we can use this same format to do lots of different things. So this is something we just launched um, a week ago. Um, Quartz is working with ProPublica on a project called Election Land. This is actually an effort to keep track of um, problems at the polls, people having trouble voting. Um, we're actually going to be monitoring, we're monitoring it right now, but we're also going to be watching on election day and then feeding tips of, about bad polling experiences back to local reporters. Um, if anybody in the room wants to participate as a journalist, uh, definitely reach out, let us know. You can drop me an email at jk at qz.com and I will uh, forward that along to folks. Um, but th this is the idea to try to cover it in real time because if you don't, if you can't cover it on election day, uh, it's basically you can't. It, it, it's it's history. You can't do anything about it. If we can cover it on the on the actual day, maybe we can draw attention to the problems too and get the election officials to pay attention to them and maybe solve them. So um, we're doing this. So using uh, text messaging, uh, WhatsApp, and Facebook Messenger. So they're all very chatty uh, platforms and we're running on all of them. It's working right now. Um, so we also do other fun things with this. Uh, this is a, a bot we built for Quartz. Uh, there is a Quartz bot on the Facebook Messenger page. Um, so if you either use Messenger on your phone or you go to the page, you can actually talk to Quartz. Um, and one of the, we do lots of things there. You can get news in sort of a chatty format. Um, we actually play with a lot of different experiences. This was for Stranger Things. Um, I don't know if there are any Stranger Things fans out there, but um, the, if there are, uh, you could have gone to Stranger, this little bot and had this experience with Stranger Things, both recapping season t one, and then once it dropped, talking about season two. Um, and uh, it's kind of fun because, uh, so we can just click here, recap season one, and uh, you get the, these, this conversational flow. Okay, ask item one. Your first reaction to this image is Justice for Barb or Seth from Goonies. And this is where we get to understand if you know, if you know this is Barb, um, then we know that you are familiar with the show and we can jump right into it. If not, we have to explain who Barb is. Um, and so Barb went missing and uh, she's apparently gone. Poor Barb, RIP Barb. Okay, so here's item two, is Eleven dead? And usually when I'm in the room and I can hear, I ask everybody, is Eleven dead? So somebody shout out, is Ele it answer yes or no? Okay, we'll see how many of you are right. No, Eleven is not dead. Sorry for anybody who, this is a spoiler. It's been, you know, a year now, I think, so I, I feel a little bit safe. Um, so here's what we can do. We can actually follow along and in, in I mean, addressing the issue of spoilers even, um, the bot can know how far along you've gotten. And it, it, asks, it actually asks you at the beginning, and we can actually keep track depending on which answers you know, which things you know the answer to, we know how far you've gone. So you can imagine this could be for a TV series like um, Westworld, which we've done something for, or um, any, any other sort of TV series, or a book, right? You could have a bot that was sort of following along, but doesn't spoil it for you because it knows where you are. Um, the other cool thing about um, Facebook Messenger, especially if you have it as an app on your phone, is that um, we can use the fact that we can um, do lots of different things, including push notifications, uh, right in that format. So. Um, 
here we're actually um, walking people through a bread making process. This particular recipe takes 20 hours to make. You have to go and do something with it and then set it aside, <clears throat> then you do more with it. Um, and so we were actually experimenting about whether or not we could get people to go through the whole process. So here, have you ever made bread before? Nope. Um, so me neither, but I've studied up on it. I'm confident we can get, this through, get through this together. And in this case, Emily, who was um, going to speak with you, um, she was actually writing this and just is right out there saying, you know, I'm Emily, I'm behind the bot. I'm ready to put together the game plan. And then it walks you through getting the ingredients, getting all set to go. Um, and so we're going to fast forward here to later where uh, because we can use animated GIFs and other images and videos, we can actually show people, you know, what their project is supposed to look like. In this case, bread. Does your bread look like this or is it too dry or is it too watery? And we can actually help solve the problems along the way. Um, by the way, Emily made, I think she said she made 12 loaves of bread just trying to do, do this bot script. Uh, so. Um, so we say uh, yes, and here's a, this is one of the great features here. So, okay, cover the bowl with plastic wrap, and you have to let it um, sit overnight, right? And Emily puts it in her bedroom closet. Okay, so if, if you put your bread in the bedroom closet, and then you space out about it, and <laughs> you don't go get it, that would be a drag. Um, but we have a solution for you. The bot knows how long you're supposed to have that bread there. So tomorrow you get a little note on your phone and Messenger, we, we send you a little message through Messenger. If you click on this message, you go back into the bot and you can follow along. Now we've had lots and lots of people make bread this way, go through this 20 hour process. We even invite them to um, share a picture of it. They can do that just by dragging it to the bot and, um, and we get lots of those pictures. Another way that bots are uh, useful in journalism is our behind the scenes. So um, uh, I don't know if you, you all use Slack, um, but Slack is a messaging system that's used by, near as I can tell, like 95% of journalists. Um, newsrooms really picked this up. And so we made a bot called QuackBot. So that's the little icon there. Um, and you just add QuackBot as a member of your team and you can ask it questions like, can I get data about agriculture? And Quackbot can understand that as like natural language, knows I want data, and goes and checks our trusted data source list and uh, gives you the top three hits of that. So we don't have to remember where the data source is, like where, where that spreadsheet is. Um, we can actually just ask Quackbot. Um, uh, and Quackbot, you can also just chat with Quackbot. Quackbot understands natural language. So uh, that's, you know, how are you today? I'm doing swimmingly. We try to keep it fun and playful. All right. Um, the other thing that um, we play a lot with is uh, voice interfaces um, like Alexa and Google Home. Um, and it's, the jury's still out a little bit about where, how news organizations fit into this. Um, we've been playing with um, the Alexa news feature called Flash Briefing. We actually have two robots reading the news. We have robot newscasters. Um, they actually read some of the scripts that we write for other, uh, other chat apps, and, um, and we don't even, we, they, they just do this uh, three times a day. We, they re automatically record uh, new scripts, and you can go listen to it. Um, I don't know if I play audio here, whether or not you can hear this. I'm gonna try it. This is just a fun little experiment. Um, if you can't hear it, um, somebody chat Alexa, me in. play Quartz Demonstration. Hi, John. How are you today? I'm pretty good. Would you like to hear about today's news? Sure. Are you sure about that? Because it's pretty depressing. Okay, forget it. Okay. Talk to you later. So that's one possibility. Like it could screen out for you uh, whether or not you're hearing, you want to hear depressing news. Um, wait, there's, we've played with quizzes, um, a news, uh, audio, audio news quiz. Really fun. 
Um, we actually experimented in the office. People really, really liked it. Um, and it turns out that uh, no one would ever ask Alexa to play the news quiz. <laughs> so we didn't actually build it. It turns out that the uh, Washington Post has built a news quiz, and I actually have heard their Alexa folks talk publicly about how uh, nobody ever plays their, their news quiz. So it's really interesting to figure out how these things fit into our world. Um, and I guess we'll, we'll know more soon. Um, so just how this all happens, I just wanted to give you a little bit of a demonstration. Um, there's uh, behind the scenes are writers, right? I mean, most of the stuff that I just showed you has been written by humans. Um, and they're, they're put into branching narratives. So if you don't know who um, Barb is um, for Stranger Things, you know, you branch off and you learn a little bit more. Um, so we definitely do take you on different little journeys depending on how you answer, but it's really written like a, a play or a script. Um, and I actually really equate it to doing something like a play. There's the, uh, the dialogue, which you can see here in white. Um, and then there are sort of the stage directions that, that are kind of in blue. Um, and uh, the things in green are actually, or the, the, the plus sign there, those are actually things that a, a human might say or a button that they might push. So this code actually looks exactly like this. Here's how it works. You hit get started and it says, hello human, hi bot is the button. And then tell me, is this what they call the beginning of a beautiful relationship? And here it says, you tell me. Okay, so and then that's exactly how you build this. Um, and it's nice because in this way, uh, while the bots can use natural language processing to understand what you ask it, using buttons is really helpful to move people through a narrative, especially when you're trying to, trying to get them through a story. Um, so there's actually, I teach a workshop and um, I was, I'm going to do it a little bit here to just show you, uh, give you a taste of it in the, in the last uh, 10, 15 minutes we have here. Um, if you want to do this yourself, uh, probably best, especially since I can't see people nodding, seeing it, how they got, how far they got along. Um, the the URL at the bottom of the screen uh, is the is where I actually walk you through this entire process. So you can do this at your leisure. Um, it's all free. Uh, all the services that I have you sign up for and stuff are all free and you can just go ahead and give it a whirl. Um, what you will do is something along these lines. Uh, so I invite uh, you to think about something you know a lot about. It could be your hometown or your organization or your favorite book, maybe the city, you know, the campus you're on, um, hobby or skill. The picture uh, there on the right is uh, Star Island, which is a place my family goes for uh, the holidays um, in the summer. Um, and so uh, I, I write, a, I use that as an example because a lot of people don't know about it and I do. So uh, I can make a little bot about it. Um, I'm using a, a platform called Dexter. Um, it's at rundexter.com. Um, it is a, uh, a free platform if, as long as you don't have hundreds of bot users. Um, so you can play with it for free. Um, and we like it because it's very friendly to people who write, right? And so we're journalists. We write, we're not coding a lot. Um, so we, we wanted to use something that worked um, for writers. Um, and so what I do is I go over and I actually just go to rundexter.com and click sign up. I'm actually gonna go ahead and do this on the screen here um, just so you can see me actually doing this. Let's do this. I'm just gonna arrange this like that. So let's see if we can second here. All right, just moving all my things around so maybe we can share this together. Okay, so I can sign in. I have, if you, if you I obviously have an account. If you don't, you sign up. Um, hold on a second. I'm just logging myself into the uh, run Dexter. Yep. Uh, okay. Uh, okay, here we go. Great, so here we go. I get into my account, and what does my instruction say here? Oops, I just wanna go. Can I not just forward this? One second here. Huh, okay, hold on one second. 
All right, we'll do it this way. Great, so I signed up, I'm in, and I just click my little green dot up in the corner here. I'm gonna make a new bot. Um, and then I just pick the blank and I create a bot over here. So I'm just gonna show you a little bit how, how I do this. Um, the first thing I do is I, I'm not actually gonna use my instructions. All right, so the first thing I do is I clear out what's in here because I don't, this is not actually blank, so I'm gonna start from the beginning. Um, and I'm just gonna say, like if I, if I say, if the human says hi, the bot, so everything the human says starts with a plus sign and everything that the bot says start with, starts with a uh, minus sign. And I can say hi, um, and the response is hello. What would you like to know about Star Island? Um, and then if I actually go over to my, I have a little test phone over here. So this is sort of our test bot. I'm just gonna move this over here. So if I go down here and I say, hi, it says, hello, what would you like to know about Star Island? Okay, now if I type, uh, uh, where is it? It's gonna go, eh, doesn't, don't, I don't know the answer to that, right? So better, to go in here and I can actually add buttons and I can say location um, and how to get there and maybe um, birds, <laughs> birds on the island. And then, so then what I do if I say hi, so it says, it, it, it's giving me a little extra message, but you can see I get some buttons here that I can pick. Now I need to, those buttons to go someplace. So I can, um, whoops, in my script over here, I can say location. Um, the, the lines you'll see with the plus signs um, all have lowercase. We, we just keep them in lowercase because that's how the code wants it. It is 10 miles off the coast of New Hampshire. Um, and then how to get there, how to get there in lowercase, uh, you take a boat. Okay, so now if I go over here and I say location, it, it, it answers me. And I can say, I can say hi again, and I can say how to get there, you take a boat. So you can see pretty quickly how this works. Um, ideally, uh, since I'm only doing two buttons, let's, we'll skip the birds here. So ideally, the way this would work is that every time it, it answers me, I get the buttons back. So another way I can do this is I can actually give the buttons its own, the, their own little line here called buttons, and then put the buttons down here, and then I can say, um, after each one of these, I can say go to buttons. And this is the code for going to buttons. It's curly brace and then at sign. So if I go over here like this, like that, and then I try it, I say hi, I get buttons. I can say location, it's 10 miles off the coast of New Hampshire, how to get there. Now you can see I, start, I have a bot that's, that's starting to work. The last thing I'm gonna show you here is if I, if you don't want it to break when somebody says anything. So if somebody says something that isn't on the, uh, in the list above, I can say, sorry, I don't know the answer to that. And so if I say, blah, sorry, I don't know the answer to that. So it doesn't break at least. Um, and the last thing I'm just gonna show you just because I think it's fun to see how easy it is to put this little bot in the real world. Um, so very, very simple bot, we'll call it a uh, simple star bot. Um, and oops, I gotta reload this. Okay, and then there's this little air, uh, airplane here. And what I can do is I can deploy this and I have all these places I can put it. I can put it on Facebook Messenger, Slack, 
uh, Twilio, which is texting, like you did at the beginning. Um, and if I go to website embed and get started, it's actually kind of cool. Um, this is this code. You don't even have to know what it says. But if I go to this and copy it, copy that code, go to a new site called pste.eu. All these instructions are in that link, which I'll show it to you again. This is just a paste bin for um, HTML. So I'm just going to put it here. And then um, if I go to that URL, you'll see, um, let's see if I can, that's working. Is it not? Oh, I didn't deploy it. Oops, hold on. Deploy. Oh, and I probably have to save my, I have to publish. One second, hold on. Uh, I have to publish my topic. Okay, so I publish and I deploy. Again, all these instructions are in there. If I go to this URL, there's down in this corner over here is a um, little chat bubble. I can click on that bubble and I can say hi. And is it gonna work? Please work. Oh no, it's not working. Hmm. That works. Well, that's supposed to work. And maybe, huh, not sure why that doesn't work. Is it there? Try this again. Is it there? Huh, I don't know. Okay, unclear why that's not working, but if you follow those instructions, it should work for you. So, but what's cool about it is that then you have a URL which you can share and, and have it work. So I'd have to go back and debug and see how, that, how to fix that. Um, sorry about that. You can also add in images and you can um, add in links. You can get really fancy and make little carousels, especially if you're working on Facebook Messenger. Um, again, if you want to go through this yourself, uh, follow this link at the bottom, jkef.me slash build dash chatbot, and uh, all the instructions for how to do it are right there, and you can give it, give it a try. Um, so with that, maybe what I'll do is take a question or two. I'm going to stop sharing here. Um, and uh, if, if the... Um, host there can just drop a question into the uh, chat, I could certainly answer one or two questions. Any questions? I know you're all super curious. So you must have one. So the best use of bots and news. Um, uh, the question is, what is the best use of for bots in news? And what we found is that um, a lot of news bots are. Um, uh, if you go to several of the sort of bigger brands, they're really just figuring out a way to put web copy into um, their bot, right? So you go in and suddenly you have a menu and you can, it's almost like going to the website. Um, we actually don't think that that's the right way to go about it. Um, you, you know, when we try to be as sort of human-like as possible, and when I'm talking to you, I don't say, so, would you like to know about item one, item two, item three, or item four? That's not how we talk. Uh, we say, hey, I want to tell you a story, and I've got a story for you. Um, so we tend to do things that are much more conversational. Um, and we also really respect people's time. You're not going to chat with a bot or anybody for you know, more than a few minutes. So the closer we can be to that chat experience, the better we are, off we are. Now, I work at an organization that really prides, prides itself on um, using these kind of interfaces. So we actually have a team of writers. And I always say the secret to a great bot is great humans. And I don't just mean the people coding it. What I do mean is the people writing. 
because everything is being written. Um, bots are not yet taking over um, journalism in terms of the writing. The writers are still much far superior uh, and um, more brilliant and more clever than any AI that we, we can see right now. Um, so we really spool out our stories in chat that way. Okay, let's take, uh, looks like we are just about at time, so maybe one more question. Oh, where do you read the answer to Quackbot? Oh, so if Quackbot talks to you, um, you uh, if you ask Quackbot a question, Quackbot talks directly back into the, the chat channel. So um, chat, uh, Slack is kind of like a super complicated um, Facebook Messenger. It's got sorts, all sorts of channels and everything. So um, what you can do is um, you can, direct message Quackbot with a question, or you can address the Quackbot to any room that Quackbot has been invited to. So you actually, it's just like, you know, if, if you wanna invite Joe to be a part of your conversation, you have to invite him to the room. You have to invite Quackbot to the room too. Um, and then you can sort of at Quackbot and Quackbot will reply right into um, into the channel. What, a bunch of the things we're going to be adding in the coming months, actually. Um, we want to make it so you can uh, drag and drop uh, a, uh, a video file or an audio file for Quackbot, and Quackbot will go and actually send it to a transcription service and get the transcript back, and then stick the link, either the link or the actual transcript, we haven't decided, right inside Slack. So can you imagine not having to deal with that? That's kind of great. Um, we built that with Document Cloud, um, and you may, if you're a journalist, you may have played with that. Um, it uh, allows you to put PDFs online. Um, it's a little bit complicated to use, and so we're going to try to make it so Quackbot can put your PDF online too, and just so sort of, uh, slack you back uh, the embed code that you need for that. Um, and the question was, where does Quackbot go to get its answers? Uh, in that particular case. Um, we actually have trained it to uh, look at one spreadsheet. So um, what we've, we're setting it up so other, in, in that case, that's a list of trusted data sources that Quartz has put together and we're sharing with the world. Um, but we've also got a, um, uh, something in the pipeline that would allow um, any team, so this is made for journalists, so if you're, say, uh, you know, at the Minneapolis Star Tribune, and you're going to, and you have data sources that you want to, you want Quackbot to look at and, and use for making some of its answers, um, you can do that. that. That's part of the plan. Um, we really see that as a possibility for style guide questions. You know, a lot of us follow AP style, but then there are a lot of uh, modifications for that, depending on the news organization you use, you know, that, that the news organization you are at might use a different style book or modifications to the AP style. And it wouldn't, wouldn't it be nice to have Quackbot just be able to answer those questions like, you know, do you capitalize this or not? Um, and so we're thinking that that might be really, really, really useful. I think we're out of time. Um, oh, wait, let's see, online user, let's do one more. Uh, Amy's asking, is there a bot writing style or genre that's now being created because of the prolifer proliferation of bots? That's a great question. Um, we actually have, at Quartz, we have um, a style guide for writing for conversational interfaces. So um, our app is a very conversational app. You, uh, you don't, it's not like a web browser. It's more like a text messaging system. And you, you learn about the news from text. And the way that is written is super clever, full of animated GIFs, lots of different things. And um, there's actually a style guide for doing that. 
Um, and I, I actually have been finding that people are getting more accustomed, so to, to your question, people are getting more accustomed to talking with uh, bots, but they also have high expectations about them. Not that they should be like humans because we recognize that the bots aren't human, but they need to be good at what they do. And if they're clever and they do things you don't expect, that's really good too. So I do think that we're slowly getting to this point where um, you recognize a good bot, um, not just because it's very human, but because it's been crafted well and it anticipated things that you wanted it to anticipate. You know, we know when bots are bad, right? We know when algorithms are bad. When, uh, so I live in Manhattan uh, in an apartment building, as do most people who live in Manhattan. There aren't very many houses in Manhattan. I get ads sometimes on Facebook for lawn furniture. And you look at that and you go, come on, come on, algorithm. You can be better than that. <laughs> um, and I think we're seeing that with bots too. Um, so there's definitely uh, an expectation that the bot be good at it, at being a bot. I think that's all the time we have. So thank you very much. If you have further questions, feel free to reach out to me on Twitter or at my email, which is jk at qz.com. Um, 